Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. This presentation will include the area of hemisections. A hemisection is primarily restricted to mandibular molar teeth. There are several indications for hemisections. The first one being a bifurcation involvement due to caries or due to a perforation with a burr during the initial endodontic occlusal opening. In either case, the roots are treatable endodontically, there is no periodontal disease, and the root segments will be restorable. A second indication for hemisection is an untreatable root due to a periodontal failure. In this case, the root is involved with an untreatable periodontal disease, but the remaining one is still surrounded in good, healthy bone. A third indication for a hemisection is a molar tooth with an untreatable root due to calcification or broken instrument, or perhaps due to an unresolving lesion which is not amenable to treatment with periapical surgery. In this graphic representation of a section of the mandible, we see a first molar tooth with a lesion around the mesial root. Within this root, we could have broken instruments, a calcified canal, or some other obstruction that would prevent us from doing this particular tooth by conventional means. We could also have this tooth in very close proximity to the mandibular canal, which would prohibit us from considering periapical surgery. You notice also that the roots are a little bit divergent, which would make this non amendable to intentional replantation. The best way to salvage this tooth is by doing a hemisection. This is a cross-section of the tooth involved, indicating at this point that the canals have been filled completely with gutta percha. Prior to considering the hemisection and cutting the tooth in half, the tooth must be treated by conventional means, thorough biomechanical cleansing of the canals and obturation of the canal or canals that are to be retained. It's not absolutely necessary to completely obturate root, the canals in the root that are to be extracted. This view shows the tooth after it's been hemisected and the mesial root has been removed. Most important when hemisecting the tooth is to make the cut in that seg segment of the root that's going to be removed. This will allow more root for the ultimate restoration of the tooth. Also extremely important is going to the furcation area making sure there's no overhang in the furcation which might induce a future periodontal loss in this particular tooth. We're going to demonstrate now the technique of hemisection. Dr. Michael Lendeman from the endodontics department will show you such a demonstration on a patient. Today we'll be doing a hemisection procedure on tooth number 19 lower left first molar. We will be removing the distal half of the tooth and retaining the mesial half. The x-ray of the tooth shows that a root canal has been done on the mesial half of the tooth. The distal half has been partially filled and will be the part which we will be removing. Usually, we don't utilize a full flap procedure in the removal of a segment of the tooth. However, there are certain times when a flap is useful. Uh, if a, a difficult surgery is anticipated or uh, if the root segment appears to be very difficult to remove, it is helpful often to lay a flap for the uh, easy visual visualization of what we're going to be doing. Well, in this particular case, we will be, as I said, taking the distal half of the tooth out, 
when we make the cut going through the firk of the tooth, we want to keep our cut in the section that is going to be removed so as not to jeopardize the part that is going to be retained. We will be cutting the tooth with a number 701L burr, which is a tapered fissure burr with extra lengths to aid in cutting the tooth. We will start in the cutting by placing the burr in the furca of the tooth on one side and connecting it with the furca on the lingual side. As you can see, there is a periodontal defect on the distal half of this tooth exposing a good portion of the distal of this tooth. From a periodontal standpoint, this particular tooth is not treatable in this area. This is the burr we will be using, as I mentioned, the 170L, the, this, I'm sorry, the 701L. And we place the tip of the burr in the furca of the tooth, trying to keep the burr more towards the distal than the mesial. Then bring the burr in from the lingual. To connect with the cut made from the buckle. Gate. And I'm going to need a mirror to check the incision that was made. And if you can see it there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the cut has been made from buccal to lingual through the tooth. The cut has been kept in the distal fragment of the tooth as much as possible, retaining as much tooth structure in the mesial as necessary. Here we have the x-ray that we just took of the tooth. If you'll notice the cut has been made into the furca of the tooth. The cut has been made down through the tooth. The fact that we do have some bleeding coming from that area indicates that we are definitely through the furca of the tooth. Our next step is to luxate the distal fragment of the tooth with a number 46 elevator.
We place the elevator against the tooth and luxate the fragment. And it should begin to move. Care must be taken not to luxate too hardly against the fragment which we wish to retain. As you can see, the fragment at this point is very loose. These are do not require as much luxation as a normal extraction because this, this segment of the tooth is normally very periodontally involved. Okay, our next procedure is to elevate the fragment of the tooth which you can see has become quite loose. We're using a number 151 forceps for removal of the fragment. And the fragment is delivered. And as you can see, the distal fragment has been removed and the mesial fragment remains. Before any further procedures are done, we take another x-ray to be sure that all of the root has been removed and that the furca has also been completely removed of any dental overhangs onto the distal half. As you can see from the x-ray, the distal fragment has been successfully removed in its entirety, but our main concern of here is the furca to be sure that there is no projecting portion of the root extending into the distal area of where the tooth was that would make a potential area for either a food trap or an area that could not be cleansed. On the patient, we can see from an overhead shot, the distal segment has been removed and we can see the area where the distal root was. Now, two other things we must be concerned about at this point is that the tooth is out of occlusion and is not having to function as a part of the dental arch. This has already been done. Our second concern here is to smooth the rough edges until a provisional restoration can be placed on the tooth. This is one of the most important parts of the hemisection is to have the fragment stabilized. The patient has an appointment with his referring dentist for this procedure. Now we'll be going to the high-speed handpiece to smooth the rough edges. And we're taking off the the rough edge on the buckle surface at this point. As well as on the lingual. You have to be rather thorough in this. The patient does have anesthesia. I can't tell you whether it's rough at this point. The burr I'm using is the same burr, 701L, that we use for secting the tooth.
We'll try to take another mirror shot so that you can see what has been done. The hemisection procedure has been completed. Now, following any hemisection procedure, you must plan an adequate restoration. If you have a single root remaining behind or most distal to the rest of the dental arch, you can perhaps adequately restore that with a single crown. If you have a root in amongst the dental arch, then perhaps the best way to do this is to splint it to a bridge. In the graphic we have here is a demonstration of the restoration from the distal root of the first molar tooth bridged or splinted to the bicuspid tooth, adequately filling in that area and returning the area to function. Let's return to the case with the patient after the case has been restored. The hemisection has been completed on tooth number 19. The patient has had the teeth restored, and we've brought him back to let you see what the restoration looks like. This is an occlusal view of the restorations. As you remember, the distal root of number 19 was extracted during the hemisection procedure, and a bridge was placed splinting tooth number 18 through tooth number 22. Now let's go down and look at the buckle view. And you can see the bridge in place from 18 all the way through the Ceramco crown on 22. Let's take a closer view, the same thing, uh, of the x-ray. The x-ray shows primarily the area where the hemisection occurred. Note the healing of the bony socket. Note the restoration in place and the way it's splinted to the mesial root of number 19. The purpose of showing you the restoration on this patient was to demonstrate one possible means of restoring a tooth that's been hemisected. For your consideration, you must consider a proper restoration if this is to be a successful case, and certainly this one is. Earlier, I indicated there are two additional indications for doing a hemisection. One is a bifurcation involvement. Let's go to an x-ray and let us demonstrate this. In this particular x-ray, you can see the bifurcation has become involved with caries. This is an essential tooth in this particular arch. The bone is good around both roots, therefore we can proceed with the procedure. Conventional Endodontic treatment is accomplished in both of the roots. Following the conventional treatment, the tooth is hemisected. At this time, it's necessary to consider a restoration for the tooth. This x-ray shows that two bicuspid crowns have been formed, one for each root, and splinted together. Now, you can splint them together or not splint them together, whichever the case need be. The other indication is a root involved with periodontal failure. The graphic here demonstrates a non-treatable case where periodontal disease has involved the distal root of this first molar. First, conventional endodontic treatment must be accomplished in this tooth. A thorough biomechanical debridement of the canals and a complete obturation of the canals. In this particular case, you'll note that we only partially obturated the distal canal of this tooth. Next, the tooth is hemisected, removing the diseased distal root. Again, let me reemphasize that when making the cut for the hemisection, make the cut in the section that's going to be removed. And secondly, let me reemphasize the fact that the frication must not have a little notch in it that's going to induce or prolong this periodontal disease. After the root has been removed, 
the periodontal defect has healed and a restoration has been placed. In this particular case, a single crown was deemed all that was necessary to adequately protect that root. In some cases, dependent upon the uh, occlusal trauma induced by the patient, you may decide to splint a root like this to the adjacent bicuspid. Hemosection should be considered as part of your overall treatment plan as another method of salvaging teeth in your patients. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.